Alex, it's so great to have you here. So I want to start with a high level question. Where is the machine fi deep in space right now? I think that this space is really on the cusp of becoming one of the major driving forces in the entire Web3 industry. And mm -hmm. frankly, I think we have to think about it as something that's much bigger than Web3 alone and something that can impact the entire sort of consumer product industry from a technical perspective. Um, mm -hmm. We're a big believer at Demo that these sorts of products, these decentralized infrastructure networks can really bring better use cases and better tools to people's lives, whether it's saving money on things like car insurance, finding better connectivity across um, you know, telecom networks, uh, better understanding their energy usage. All of these applications are true bridges from what we call Web3 into the consumer's life. Wow. So what problem is Demo solving? <clears throat> You really have to talk about Demo from two perspectives. One is the consumer's problem, and the second is the developer's problem. And I'll address both as quickly as I can. Yeah. Uh, on the consumer side, most people are pretty unfamiliar with the idea of a connected car. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't realize that if you buy a new car today, it's probably getting software updates in your garage. Mm -hmm. um, the com the people often say modern cars are data centers on wheels. And the problem is those wheels are not open. So you as a consumer, it's sort of like buying an iPhone and being restricted to just the iPhone apps, like your notepad, your alarm clock, not a very exciting device. Um, and the corollary is if you buy a Toyota, you're restricted to the things that you get in the Toyota app. What we're doing is we're opening that up and we're saying you should have an app store for your car. You should have one app where you can connect your Toyota, your Ford, your Tesla, whatever it is. And you should be able to access the insurance that the free market can bring you, not just Toyota's insurance product, but any insurance product that wants to sell you insurance through that app. And in fact, you should be more fun than that too, than just insurance and maintenance and certifications. You should be able to access games and quests and um, trophy cases and car clubs, all with the data from your car. So from a consumer perspective, we're really trying to open up access to this incredibly um, data rich asset. And that's where the developers come into play too. If you're a developer and you wanna bring those tools, those experiences to drivers, you have to go and spend three years in the boardroom with Toyota and then do the same with Mercedes and do the same with BMW. And that's just not feasible. If you wanna bring an app to every car in the world, Demo is the way to do that. Wow, so why do you need Web3 exactly to solve this problem? <clears throat> we actually came to build in the Web3 space more as following a series of sort of prompts and questions as we sought to establish how do we build the best developer platform for vehicles. And one of the things that being observers of the Web3 space we'd identified a while ago is that um, if you want to create a maximally open ecosystem, then you need to create the primitives um, in the most open way. And for us, that's public blockchains. Mm -hmm. So if you can make a vehicle identity that lives on a public blockchain that any developer can go and read the docs for and access, you're immediately giving yourself a leg up over um, any sort of closed developer platform. Right away, we identified that. And then of course, there's things like the composability that you, know, you can plug in other protocols and things building in the Web3 space and immediately bring a lot more resources to users. <laughs> Do you have a token? There is a token, there is the demo okay. token. We um, think about it very much as like a reward point for our drivers. Okay. Um, so you earn some tokens for getting connected at the start. And then the providers in our marketplace, which today include uh, companies that help you refinance your car, um, actually advisory services for, for vehicles, um, all sorts of other things, mechanics. Uh, if you book services through our marketplace, you're actually able to earn additional demo tokens. And that's just through the economics of those transactions. Those um, providers are typically paying a fee just to mm -hmm. get access to the customers. And we're basically giving that back to drivers as a reward. And again, going to the mindset as this can be a big consumer category, abstracting away the token, the questions, and really just saying, hey, this is a reward that lives on a public blockchain. And that's cool because other people, every provider can plug into the same reward system. Now all of a sudden everyone can have an airline mile for their car. Nice, I like that. So where is Demo right now? Where are you in terms of development, users? Uh, we've been building Demo for about 18 months. Okay. Uh, the app has been live for about 11 of those at this point. We have 7,500 cars or so connected today across the US, Canada, and Europe. Um, we have a tremendous community of testers and, and sort of evangelists who have helped us get to that point. Um, right now, our focus is on continuing to test those, uh, onboard those cars, mm -hmm. 
continuing to actually onboard fleets, which are coming to work with Demo, and most importantly, building out the developer ecosystem. Okay. So over the next 18 months, what people are going to see is that they're going to see a lot more providers come into the space that can actually offer services to people with connected vehicles. And of course, they're going to see a lot more cars get connected to Demo. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time, Alex. Thanks, Dean.